everyone, my name is Helen and I am a knitwear stitch designer and I work a lot on commissions and with brands but my main focus within knit is to create lots of interesting, exciting, colourful swatches that focus lots on development techniques and this is what we're going to do today with this sample that I have here. It's a nice basic sample, um, it's super easy to follow but I'm going to go through lots of development points as well. I feel that within knit education and kind of knit resources that are out there, you're always shown stitches, which is great, but you're never really shown what to do with the stitches, how to develop and play with them to make it your own. And that's why we end up with quite a few replicas and copies of each other's work. Not intentionally, but my focus, like I said, is the development. So hopefully when you've knit this, you can also knit some developments of your own. I did another one here. It's a nice, simple um, development. It's pretty similar, but it's just got one small change. So when I talk about developments, basically this means that you're just picking one factor that we've explored and you're changing that ever so slightly to, to come up with something a little bit different, a little bit new. It's not about kind of reinventing the whole wheel. It's just taking what you know and developing from there. Now, today I'm going to, um, I've already cast on, as you can see, and I've got my weights hung and I've cast on 40 needles in total. So if you want to go ahead and do that, I'm going to be using just a simple four ply um, cotton for the demonstration. And then I'm going to go through with um, actual yarns to replicate that stitch. Um, I'll talk to you a bit more about your yarn choice when we've um, developed through, but when you're sampling, you always want to kind of pick a nice, clean, easy yarn that's easy to see, something that isn't too expensive so you can do all of your design ideas um, on that sample. And then when you're confident with your stitch, you can change the colours and um, start to refine. So it reduces a lot of waste and spending money on yarn. So again, if you want to get cast on with your 40 needles and you will need as well a one point transfer tool. Um, I'm knitting on a um, Singer knitting machine with a Knitmaster carriage, um, but I'm not really going to go into any carriage functions today as we don't need them. So it doesn't matter what machine you're on, as long as you've got some needles and a carriage, you'll be fine. So get cast on and we will go from there. Now our needle setup is going to be three needles at the edge and then we're going to have seven needles out of action, two in, seven out, two in, seven out, two in, etc. So we are going to transfer the needle into this um, needle setup. You could start with three in, seven needles, not cast on at all, but I personally like to transfer everything out. It just gives a bit of a cleaner finish to your swatch and it gives it a little bit more structure and this is something you would definitely want to do if you were making a garment with this stitch with something that was very open cast every needle on at first and start transferring it inwards so that you can open up the space with the needles you need so going from left to right the first three needles one two three we are going to leave these in b position or working position and then i want you to count the next seven so one two three four five, six, seven. I'm bringing them forward ever so slightly, but not too far forward that the latch opens and the stitch comes out of the latch. And I'm going to identify that middle needle in between the seven that I've brought forward. So this is technically needle seven if we're counting from left inwards. Now with that needle seven, I'm going to transfer one position either to the left or right, whichever you feel is most natural. And then I need to identify the next stitch that I'm going to transfer. So again, we will have three needles in action. Then we'll have seven out. So I'm just going to bring those forward so I can see them. Then the next two needles we're going to leave in B position. And then again, count seven. So two, four, six, and seven. So all I'm doing here is I'm just simulating the needles that will be in and will be out of action. And I want to identify the middle needle again. So for a needle count, that's needle six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So locate needle 16 from left to right. And again, transfer that one position either left or right. Make sure it's consistent though. So now between this empty needle and this empty needle, I have a gap of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm gonna count another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight transfer one two three four five six seven eight and transfer and all of those empty needles are in a position or out of action 
If this doesn't make complete sense at the moment, don't worry, it will when we kind of keep transferring it out and you'll see the structure that we end up with. So just stick with me for now. So like I said, all of those needles are out of action and we are going to knit one row. Then I'm going to transfer the needle that's at the left hand side, of the needle that's out of action. So that's technically needle uh, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to put it onto five. Then I'm going to transfer eight and put it onto nine. So I have three needles out of action. So I'm doing that for every eyelet or empty needle. One to the left, one to the right, one to the left, one to the right, etc. And you're leaving those needles out of action. Okay. And again, knitting one row. Okay. And then repeating one to the left. So technically that's needle five on four and one to the right, one to the left, one to the right, one to the left, one to the right. And we're going to keep doing this until we have seven needles out of action. So transfer, make sure those needles are in A position. Knit one, one to the left, one to the right. You might feel your knit getting a little bit tighter because we've got less needles in action and more out of action. So this can cause a little bit of a strain on the sample itself. But transferring one to the left, one to the right, you'll end up with three needles in action, seven out, two in, seven out, two in, seven out, two in, seven out, three in. The reason we've got three at the edges is just because it is our edge. So we want to create a little bit of stability there, um, just because sometimes if your edges are too thin, they can roll in a little bit more. Um, and your kind of how many needles you have at your edge depends on your gauge. So if you're working on a finer machine, you'll want more needles. A chunkier machine, less needles. And we're going to do the last knit row to get us back to the right because I like to start on the right and then we can start the stitch. So you can see now that what we've done is instead of just casting on three, seven out, two, seven out, etc. and having it kind of like that, we've created a bit of a structure to the sample by casting on with all needles and then transferring out to make our needle set up. This is something, like I said, I prefer to do as it just gives more structure to the piece of fabric. Now, we're going to start knitting our swatch. So what you might want to do at this point is change colour if that will help you. But I'm going to stick to um, the same colour as it'll be quite easy to count how many rows I've knit. So what I want you to do now is just knit four rows for me. Okay, so as you can see, we've created um, ladders and obviously the more needles we have out of action, the larger the ladder will be. So you may want to even play around with the needle setup after we have done this swatch. You can play um, with changing how many needles are in and how many are out. And you don't have to have it repeating equally across. You could have maybe a three by seven or one by 10, something like that. You can just play around with that however you like. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna pick up the newest four floats. So I've got one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna use my transfer tool and I'm just gonna lift it so those four floats are on my transfer tool and I'm gonna pick them up and I'm gonna put them not on the two needles, but the needle to the um, left of those two needles. This is section one, two, three, four. So in section one, we have picked up those four floats and we've put them to the left hand side of those two needles. So if you need a needle count, it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've lifted them onto needle ten. And then we are going to do the same on section two. And we are going to put them to the right hand side of those needles. And that's technically needle three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. OK, so what we do here, we're going to repeat here. So we're mirroring exactly what we've done here. So again, picking up the four floats on the left hand side of those two, picking up the four floats or ladders, whatever you want to call them, and putting them on the right hand side of those two needles. 
Okay, so when those floats have been lifted, again, mirroring, so making sure what we've done here, we've done here, we're going to knit one row. Okay, now, if that was a little bit tight, you might be able to see here that my stitch hasn't knit properly. So first thing I'm going to do is just knit that in by hand. One thing you can do to help is you can bring your needles forward into D or E position, depending on what needle, um, at what machine you're on, or into the holding position to help process everything. You may also want to check your weights, make sure you've got enough weights on, or maybe your yarn is too thick. So it's kind of problem solving and making those adjustments as you go. Now, I've knit those lifted floats. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my sample back to the original set out, which was 727727, etc. And I'm going to transfer those stitches that have lifted one position inwards onto those two needles. I'll show you over here. So picking up that newly knitted stitch and transferring it onto the left of the two and onto the right of the two and making sure that they're out of action. And again, if I want to kind of assist those knitting, because you will feel it's a little bit tight, I can just bring them forward to help everything. And again, I'm going to knit four rows. So one, two, three, four. Okay. And then I'm going to pick up the floats again. So counting one, two, three, four. And I have a choice now that I can make. I can either put them in the same position or I can alternate them. So I could either put them back onto the same needle or put them onto needle four, which is what I'm going to do. And again, with these four, again, you could put them on the same needle or I could alternate it. So I'm going to put them onto the needle that's on the left hand side of the two that are central to the swatch. OK, and then with this swatch again, what I'm doing on this side, I'm doing on this side. So with this section, sorry, I'm going to pick up those four needles, move them in towards the center. So what I do on section one, I do on the three. So it's the same. And then what I do on section two, I'm going to do on section four. So lifting those four needles and putting them pretty much to the edge of the swatch. And again, if I just want to kind of make sure if I feel that and then it's getting a little bit too tight. Again, I'm using four ply. I could use something a little bit finer or smoother for this swatch, but it doesn't matter. Um, I can just bring the needles forward to help them knit. The speed that you knit at as well will also influence this. So if you're knitting super fast, you're not going to give the needles chance to kind of push all of the stitches past the latch, etc. So don't knit too fast either because that will cause you problems. And then again, those needles that have picked up, I'm going to transfer them back onto the sections. So on the left hand side, I'm picking the stitch up that's on needle four and putting it on two, three. In the middle, one position inward. And then on the left hand side, uh, on the right hand side, sorry, what I do here, I'm doing here. So picking up needle four and putting it on two, three. So every time we have lifted our floats and transferred them, we should be back in our original needle set out, which was three of the edges, seven out, two in, seven out, two in, etc. And we end up with four sections. So you're always just checking, making sure that your fabric is being resolved back to that original stitch. So again, I'm going to knit my four rows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat everything I have just done. So this stitch is formed of um, repeats and there are two motifs per repeat. So this was the first motif, this was the second, and we're going to repeat them both. So section one, picking up all the floats and putting them on that edge needle and mirroring it the same. So what we did here, we're repeating here. And then of course, what we do here, we repeat here. So when you are developing samples as well, you want to be quite kind of logical about what you're doing. If it's too random, it's going to be really hard to follow. It's going to be really hard to replicate if you wanted to put it into a garment or if you wanted to do maybe a final sample or something like that. So it's always good to de design with a little bit of um, repetition 
you know, some some kind of logic just to help you. And also um, when you can follow something easily, which has a rhythm, you can knit quicker as well. So again, I'm pushing those needles out of action just to help them knit or into hold, sorry. And I just knit one row. And again, we want to resolve our stitch so we are back onto our original needle setup. Again, it feels a little bit tight for me personally, so I'm just going to bring the needles forward to help them knit. And I'm going to knit my four rows. And again, lifting the float, so I'm not going to put them in the same place. I'm now alternating, so we're on to the second motif. I'm going to lift those up, pop them on, so one to the left, one to the right, one to the left, one to the right. And you can see here I'm pulling my weights a little bit. So because of how much it's been stretched and kind of distorted a little bit, the weight is lost here. So I may decide to pop an extra weight on or just pull it as I'm knitting. Um, but again, bringing out all of the needles to support them. Knitting one row and then transferring back into my original needle setup. So back into our seven, two, seven, two, seven, two, and then three at the edges. So now we have done two repeats. So I would encourage you to keep repeating this. Um, so again, your repeat essentially is knit four, lift your floats, Knit one, transfer your stitches back into the original needle setup. And this is what I would write down as well for notes for myself if I was learning this. So knit four, lift floats, transfer into original needle setup, repeat essentially. Okay, so we're knitting four. And then again, we're lifting floats, but we're doing it, we're alternating. Knitting one row, transferring back into our original setup. So it's quite basic in terms of what you're doing. And again, you're just repeating that until you basically want to finish. Now, I always finish my repeats with the one I started with. So it looks symmetrical in the middle. So it looks balanced. So um, this is just something that um, I'm a little bit OCD about. But I like my swatches to kind of look like they are symmetrical on the left and the right. And also, if you had a mirror in the middle of the swatch, um, it would be reflective of how it started. This is something you might want to think about more if you're doing um, coloured stripes or if you're doing um, banded stitch techniques. So you're doing maybe eyelets, tucks, and then you might want to finish with eyelets, for example. So it looks like it's balanced in the middle. Anyway, that's a whole different thing. Um, but I'm going to knit my four rows. And basically keep repeating. So things that you might want to consider when developing this is when you pick up your floats, where do you put the floats? Do you keep putting them in the same place each time? Do you keep alternating? Do you pop them in the middle? Do you move them across each time? So you put them on needle one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven. You know, you can play around um, with the needle setup, as we said. So the more needles you have out, the larger your floats will be. You could play around with colour in this technique. So maybe every row that you knit is a different colour. So you have four different colours being lifted at once. Um, if you are wanting to create a swatch that's quite textural, like this one, so you can see it's got a bit of a relaxed kind of vibe to it. I'm using probably about, I don't know, um, probably about nine, ten ends of yarn here. So I'm using a range of viscose and mohair. And the mohair is creating that kind of texture that you can just um, ever so slightly see 
oh, it's getting a bit hot. And the viscose is creating that kind of structure and that shine a little bit, that shimmer. So you might want to play around with your fibres. But if you want something that's quite textural like this, you'll want to use lots of fine um, fibres. If you want something that's more structural and clean, then you'll want to kind of um, match the yarn to the gauge of your machine. So like I said, I'm on a standard gauge and I'm using a four ply yarn. So it's a very clean structural um, impression of the swatch. I've just lifted my ladders and I'm just going to knit one and I'm going to show you another way that you might want to um, lift up the floats. So again just getting those needles back to where they are. So we're back in the original needle setup. You might decide that you want to tuck the needle Okay, so you might decide, I'm just going to knit one row so they sit in there. You might decide to bring the needle that you're going to lift the floats onto out into hold. Okay, so into the D or E position, E if you're on Brother D, if you're on Knit Master Silver Reed or Singer. And you need to put the carriage on hold. So on the Brother machine, you'll have an N and a H or an N, I and a H. Pop it on H for me. And on the Singer Knitmaster and Silverade machines, you'll have these Russell levers. You'll have two of these, one at left, one at the right. Pop it onto the first position in both directions for me. So left and right. And then just knit the amount of rows. So it's already lifted and held those floats for me. So I don't have to physically lift them. And then turn your carriage off of hold. So back onto N for the brother and on the... Um, Silver Knitmaster Singer Machines back onto the second position and that will knit it for you. Now I find that with the tucks sometimes um, it's harder for the needles to process everything so it can cause a few more problems and you know some stitches may not knit properly but you'll find what works for you but you still need to transfer over. The reason that I would encourage you to use your transfer tool though is just because you'll um, become more familiar with the transfer tool if you're not 100% confident with it. Um, but also when you're a bit more hands-on with your swatches, um, you think a little bit differently about how to develop them. I feel like when you're just letting, you know, the punch cards like the needles or you know, letting the machine do more of the work, you're not necessarily engaging as much as you could be with the technique itself. Um, but again, if I was knitting and then I would maybe change where I lift those needles. So again, I've selected all the same ones this time. And then again, pop your carriage on to hold. Off of hold. Okay, so you can see it. It is definitely quicker. Um, but it depends how you want to work. But that's another way that you could approach it. So maybe you want to design by hand of your um, transfer tool just to kind of get a plan going. And then maybe you want to use that technique just to speed it up so you're not lifting each individual section. Now you can see that I kind of um, changed away from my design a little bit. I repeated some things twice in a row. So you can decide, do I keep alternating or do I repeat something twice or how do I move on from that? So in this swatch, you can see that I have lifted and then instead of alternating, I've lifted again. Then I've alternated, alternated, then gone back to the original motif. Now the tension on this swatch isn't perfect. One thing that you want to um, bear in mind, well, mainly because it's viscose as well, it doesn't have that much of a structure, but on here, the mohair, helps it with the structure but it's still a little bit loose and tight so when you are lifting the um, needles um, and you, it does feel tighter you may want to keep loosening and loosening your tension but essentially all that's going to do is just make your other stitches look really loose um, and of a lesser quality so playing around with tension is something you might want to take the time um, with before just to make sure that you're knitting it really nicely don't just jump into a final thing um, otherwise you'll just kind of waste your time if it doesn't look amazingly good with the tension so this would be considered my test swatch so your first swatch on the machine should be um, an opportunity for you to put lots of ideas down it's literally like you're scribbling on paper any idea that you have you're just 
putting it into the fabric and you're looking at sections and thinking, okay, I like this, I don't like this, changing this, blah, blah, blah. Any idea you have, you want to try it before you then go into final colours and start knitting it. I would also recommend that if you have done quite a few developments, you write these down as you go. Um, it happens every single time you think, okay, I'll remember it, it's fine. And then you'll be like, oh, I actually don't have a clue what I've done. It happens to everyone. The best thing is just take that 30 seconds and write down what it is that you have done, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, take this off of the machine. I'm gonna backwind it onto the cone so I don't actually waste any of this yarn. And I'm gonna add some color and I'm gonna knit myself a final sample. So here is the finished stitch and as you can see I've just got it pinned to a blocking mat. I've given it a little bit of a steam. I'm just going to let that relax so that when I take it off it retains its shape. But you can see how we've picked it up. This is the right side facing. You might decide that you prefer um, the wrong side which may be just slightly more textural. But you can play around with this with lots of different fibres. You can experiment and see how you can develop the stitch itself by playing around with all of those development techniques that we spoke about. If you are interested in any more uh, stitch tutorials you can visit me on Patreon where I have lots of different um, videos on there and if you do make any um, versions of this sample or developments you can send them to me on Instagram at the knit kid that's with two e's and I'll pop a link below as well if you would like to share your work.